Okay, welcome to the first week set of slides which I'm going to talk you through. This is my first go at this, so excuse me if it's a little bit amateurish in places. Probably the whole thing will be amateurish, but we'll see. So, I'm going to take you through the slides, just give a quick summary of the key points which you need to be thinking about when you review the this week's lecture for your um, assignment. Okay, so... I'm going to go first through the first few slides quite quickly. There's nothing really there apart from uh, background information until we get on to the main body of the uh, lecture. So nothing there really. You just need to know who we are and where we are. Um, this is just background information about the lecture. Um, this is the textbook, so it's worth bearing in mind that you need to either get a hold of a copy of the book, a second-hand copy is fine, or get a new one, or go to the library, or is also I think available as an ebook from the library. Essentially, if you're following this book and reading the material in this book, you'll be up to speed with what we're covering throughout the rest of the module. Okay, so I would uh, refer to this book. Obviously, you'll need to do a lot more reading beyond this. Throughout the slides, you'll notice there are little references uh, at various points. Follow up on those if you want more information about those particular topics. Otherwise, you can um, just uh, focus on the material in these books. In particular, I draw your attention to the critical uh, thinking boxes throughout each chapter. as little boxes. Um, some are um, operations in practice. Others are uh, critical aspects of operations. And those are good points to pick up on and think about to help you, help you encourage you to think a bit more critically about the subject. Okay, so these are the learning objectives for the module, and these are the various aspects we're going to cover throughout the course. Um, the last point, supply chain management, actually will come a few weeks earlier, and the last lecture will be on uh, operations improvement. So there's a little bit of a change at the bottom there. Okay, seminars. Make sure, if you haven't already, that you're signed up for a seminar group or set of groups. My advice is go to your seminars in particular, even if you drop out of any of the lectures, I encourage you obviously to come to the lectures as well, but uh, uh, in particular, go to the seminars, that's where I think a lot of the learning can happen, where you can test your ideas, have a go at some of the exercises I'm going to give you throughout the module, and also ask questions and um, ensure you understand the key concepts which are being picked up week on week. Okay, what else have we got here? Oh, you're going to be an operations manager. You're not. Operations is found everywhere. Okay, so what we have here is the nuts and bolts of operations management. It's very simple, really. It's about inputs and outputs and some sort of value-adding process going on in the middle. Okay, so really... All you need to know, or the key thing you need to know about operations management, and the key takeaway from this particular um, uh, lecture session was about having understanding inputs, outputs, what goes on in the middle, and what we're interested in is actually all of these things. In particular, operations management tends to focus on the transformation process in the middle, but if you think about suppliers and get them suppliers involved in, in as part of the process, then the input is very important and we're always interested in what our customers think about what we're producing, be it a service or a product. Okay, so that model is now developed by Slack and you'll find this in the textbook. So ignore the direct bit at the top there for a moment. What we have is the inputs and outputs. Inputs can either be transformed resources, things which are changed as part of the process, or transforming resources, things that act upon the transform resources to carry out the change. So we need, for production of um, products, you need a warehouse, sorry, a, a factory and a production line and staff to operate the production line, robots and machines. Those are all transforming resources. And the products which are turned from components into a finished product are the transformed resources. 
of course, outputs and products go to customers. Those could be other organisations or they could be the final consumer, the final customer, you and I, when we go and buy something from a shop, okay, or buy something from Amazon or online. Anyway, so <clears throat> that's the basic setup. Then in the middle is where a lot of uh, operations management focuses his attention. So the operations is directed through some sort of strategy, which we'll talk about next week. That leads to design of the specific operations, its setup and so forth. Then the operation delivers its product or service. And finally, operations is under a continuous pro or should be under a continuous process of development as people try to people within operations try to improve the quality, the speed, the uh, reduce the cost. Um, improve the dependability and so forth of the operation. I'll come to those uh, those key uh, indicators next week. Operations management. Okay, in this slide, what I was talking about was how operations overlaps in particular with product and service development. So products or services are developed and devised and they need to be produced and delivered. So that is the job of the operations. Similarly, Operation uh, products and services are promoted to customers um, or marketing can also find out what customers want from their products, from products and services and uh, convey that information back to the operations. And these overlap, there we are, nice little animation there. Okay, so what we have here are those two uh, functions interacting operations and I've got the uh, issue uh, some of the factors um, coming up on this slide other op other functions which might be important are information technology IT is crucial to modern day operations management uh, the human resources function uh, people are obviously crucial to uh, all services but also manufacturing operations uh, the accounting and finance function as operations needs to make money or be within its budgets and and uh, cost constraints and engineering and technical functions okay and you can see in each of these cases I've got the some factors which interrelate the uh, those functions with the operations okay so operations as I've already alluded to is found everywhere manufacturing is where a lot of operations management theory developed but actually it's applied primarily to service organizations because most people work in a service type organization so um, got a number of variety of different organizations represented there but they, they basically the takeaway from this particular slide is that any organization no matter what it does or what its job is what its purpose is will have some kind of thing it does some kind of service it delivers some kind of product it manufactures or maybe a mix of both and operations is about the management of the process of delivering those services and or products <clears throat> okay so this slide is about uh, the distinction between products and services and I think the thing to bear in mind here is that it's really can be seen as a kind of continuum so at the top we have pure products um, which are tangible things which can be touched seen smelt whatever okay whereas services pure services tend to be intangible we experience them we consume them uh, in a kind of emotional and cognitive way but they aren't necessarily touched the reality is most things are somewhere in between so if you go to a restaurant or if you um, go to a cinema or consume lots of other services, you're also consuming some kind of product and there's a tangible element. So the way to think about the distinction between products and services is as a continuum. And so I've got um, examples here. Crude oil production is a pure product, as is aluminium smelting. Special machine tool production is producing something, but you might also have some kind of... Um, guidelines or some kind of support when those machines are sold and take, taken possession of by a customer. Um, restaurants obviously have both uh, food, which is, a, which is a tangible thing, 
and the service of producing the food and uh, serving it to the customer. Uh, then we have information systems providers. What else do we have here? Management consultancies. Very much a uh, service kind of um, activity. Psychotherapy clinics. Um, could be anything really. Could be a GP, a general practice uh, doctor of some kind. Or it could be a dentist or that sort of thing. Okay, and I've got some examples of specific organisations. Acme Whistles is actually an organisation which exists and can be found in uh, Birmingham. They manufacture whistles for um, all sorts of purposes, but mainly for referees in rugby, football and other sports. Uh, Predamange is a, obviously a sandwich bar, Ikea and a safari lodge. <clears throat> so one of the examples was um, Predamange. Uh, so they called themselves a high-end snack and sandwich retailer. Um, now, one of the things I picked up on here was some of the words which are used. Like, words like high-end, wholesome, these don't actually mean anything. They have no meaning unless they're specifically defined. So these words are nice words, nice-sounding words, which lots of organisations use, but with no real meaning. And you'll find this in all, with all sorts of products and all sorts of services. Okay, This will be particularly important when we come to talk about the notion of quality and what we mean by quality later on in the module. Okay. So they make sandwiches freshly every day, fresh ingredients. What does fresh mean? I could put that in inverted commas as well. Uh, fresh ingredients every morning, and they serve so lunch and there's their catch for Okay. Like any operation, they have inputs and outputs. The inputs are the products and the services they sell, um, the people who deliver them, the shop itself. Those are all inputs. Those are all resources which are required to deliver their service. The outputs are hopefully satisfied customers. Okay, so there's an example of some inputs, um, some transformed and transformer resources, outputs are satisfied customers. The customers go in hungry or thirsty, come out with food and drink, which enable them to satisfy that hunger and thirst. Okay, now the product and service development is very important to an organization like this. Uh, it has to be appealing and attract customers with this organization which is uh, found all over the country they are for them it's important to have a brand image which they can find every which you can find everywhere so that's part of the product and service development and uh, they're always developing new sandwiches and new drinks and if they find a sandwich or a drink is not very popular they might discontinue that and replace it with something else so product and service development is very important and this impacts on how those products and services are developed, uh, are delivered through operations. Marketing is also crucial, and this also has an impact on the operations. So I've got some examples here of key facts. Okay, so another perspective, another way of looking at an organisation. Here's IKEA, which I'm sure most of us know. Large furniture retail organisation found all over the country, all over the world, actually. Okay, so design of the store. And its layout in particular, which I'll talk about later on in the uh, module, is crucial for an organisation like IKEA, or for any organisation for that matter. Um, job enrichment is important to this organisation, um, in particular because it has an impact on the way the staff interact with customers. Um, they continually look to improve their operations. Um, they monitor what's going on. They measure uh, performance in all sorts of aspects. Um, they rush for fast replenishment of products, which means a very good close relationship with their suppliers. Um, they maintain cleanliness and safety in the operation. Uh, the site stores an appropriate size in the most effective locations. So they vary in sizes depending on where the uh, store is located. And uh, the products are designed very effectively and efficiently to be flat packed. IKEA is a master at that kind of um, operation. <clears throat> so, um, another process where we can think about a continuum. Now here we're thinking not so much about uh, different kinds of operation in terms of services or products, but in terms of whether an operation is a mass operation or a very small one-off bespoke operation. So on the left-hand side, we've got mass operations. 
and on the right hand side we have uh, smaller more bespoke uh, operations delivering to specific customers you can see the financial services furniture manufacturing hotels um, again virtually any operation can be delivered on a, in a uh, uh, in terms of bulk and a large mass production process or mass delivery of services and can also at the same time alternatively can be delivered as a um, delivered as a more bespoke um, operation to specific high-end customers. Okay. So, the next section of the lecture was around the idea of thinking about how to make sense of operations. So we talked so far about general background to operations, inputs, outputs. That's one way actually of analysing operations, um, whether they're mass operations or bespoke operations. Um, the sort of things which would go into an operation for any organization. Now we're going to think about how we can make sense of those specific operations. And on the first slide here, what we see is that we can think of operations at several, many levels. I've got three levels here, but you can think about it in more detail if you want to. So at the top level, we can think about the supply network. These are lots of different organizations, all producing things, services or products, which then sell to other organizations. And eventually a product or service will go through a network and get to the final consumer. Okay, within each specific organization, there'll be a series of processes which are carried out in order to deliver specific products or, and or services. And then within each particular part of those processes, you'll have a specific process, okay? And a flow between the resources which are being uh, which are being used to deliver the service or product. So that's one way of thinking about operations at the macro level, at the micro level, and somewhere in between. And this is just an example. I'd say take a little bit of time to look through this and try to make sense of it. This is taken out of the textbook, so you can go to the textbook and read a bit more around that. Okay, and then. This is the uh, network of suppliers. So in this particular example, we have the operation in the middle and we, the language you use are first tier, second tier, third tier and so forth. And organizations going closer to the customer are referred to as going downstream. Organizations further away from the customer are upstream. Okay. And uh, so that's just some of the language around uh, supply networks. We'll come back to this when we talk about suppliers later on in the module. Okay, here's a really good way of thinking about operations and trying to understand them. It's often just called the four V's as I've shown and the four V's are volume, variety, variation in demand and visibility which basically is a way of saying contact, a V for contact and that's customer contact, direct customer contact. Okay, so Operations which are manufacturing will normally be high volume, high variety, low variety, um, have very low variation demand and have low visibility of contact in terms of uh, customer contact. Um, services tend to be, uh, can also be all those things, but also tend to be um, lower in volume, higher in variety, higher in variation demand and higher in terms of visibility, often very high in terms of visibility. So, what do we have here? We have some of the implications. I'm not going to go through these in detail. I did in the lecture, but I'll let you look through those in your own time. Um, there's variety, uh, variation demand, and visibility. Okay. Essentially, the way of thinking about this is that uh, everything to the right-hand side of that slide is lower in unit cost, is cheaper to deliver, basically through... Uh, economies of scale, whereas everything to the left hand side is going to be more expensive per unit um, because you're delivering something specifically for individual customers. Okay, so that's the way of thinking about it. And then we've got some examples. So uh, a low volume activity could be manufacturing some special carpentry work, whereas uh, a high volume activity might be producing 
flat pack furniture for Ikea or something like that. And that's what these guys are here are doing this picture. Okay, you can see some of the um, implications of that. Uh, for variety, um, high variety is essentially providing lots and lots of different options for your customers. Okay, and so it is, as I've said here, complex. Your, it's all about matching customer needs to what we can deliver. The unit costs tend to be higher. So Yo Sushi, you'll find in various places around the country. Um, it was a clever idea um, developed about 20 years ago or 30 years ago, um, but still has relatively high variety, even though the costs compared to going to a restaurant are lower. Whereas uh, McDonald's, obviously we're all familiar with McDonald's and everything is very process driven. Everything has very low unit costs. You can get a very cheap meal at McDonald's. Okay, variation in demand. Um, demand can go up and down throughout the year or throughout a month or even throughout a week or throughout a day even. And some organizations, some operations need to be able to manage that variation in demand. Others are able to, like um, Black Cabs here, are able to uh, have a continuous demand throughout the day and uh, are able to set up their operations differently in order to uh, benefit from that, from less variation demand. Okay, visibility. Uh, this is about uh, the extent to which the customer is interacting with a service uh, provider, normally a service provider, um, although in this case, the service provider is also providing a product. Subway, you buy your sandwich and they make it for you as you go through the process. Okay, McDonald's, very low contact, very low visibility. Everything happens behind that counter, behind behind the um, machines which you see in front of you. And the only contact you have is with somebody who's just pressing your buttons and, uh, and taking your order, which they then deliver and try to get you through the process as quickly as possible. Okay, so normally things will either be on the right-hand side as shown there or on the left-hand side as shown there. Okay, organizations need to understand where they are on this. As you can see, again, these are continuums. There's not, uh, it's not either high or low. It's high-ish or low-ish or somewhere in between. And so organizations need to know where they are in terms of their analysis of, the, of their operations and also where they want to be. Are they where they want to be? Okay. If not, how can they get there? What are the strategic implications of where they find themselves? And that's something we'll pick up in the next lecture. Okay. So I was going to ask you to do a little exercise, but um, we didn't have time for that. Uh, so in summary, okay. Can you answer these key questions? And each, after each lecture, I'll ask you, I'll start with, here's some key questions which you need to think about. At the end, can you answer them? Okay. Do you have an idea of what operations management is? Okay. It's a process. There are inputs, outputs. The input, output, transformation model is very, very useful to thinking about any operation. Okay. So you can look at anything going on around you. Think of it in terms of an operation. It's a process with inputs, outputs, and something going on. Okay, hopefully that's something going on is adding value to the inputs to turn them into outputs. And that's the way of thinking about operations. Okay, what, why is operations management important in all types of organization? Okay, and the way to think about that, I guess the way to think about that really is to think about the four Vs. It's important but so that we are able to deliver the right products and services to our customers at the right time, in the right way, to the right quality. And the four Vs are crucial in enabling us to do that. What is the input-output transformation process? We've talked about that. What is a process hierarchy? Starting at the supply network, going down to a specific organization, and then into more detail in terms of the actual specific processes going on within that organization. How do operations processes have different characteristics? That's the four Vs. And what, what are the activities of an operation of operations management? What are we doing? Okay, and next week we're looking at strategy. Okay, buy your book from your local bookstore. If you, if you want to buy a book, um, they 
promised apparently to match Amazon and uh, WH Smith. So um, that's a pretty good deal if you want to get your book 